everybody. Welcome to our conversation series. This time our guest is Isabel, who is going to be talking to us about people with multiple chemical sensitivities. Okay, Isabel, welcome. Oh, hi, everyone. Thank you for staying and listening to this conversation. My name is Isabel Williams, and i um, I've lived in this community since 1995. I um, contracted chronic Lyme disease about 25 years ago. And um, so that, the, that affects the immune system. And at this point in my life, I find that I have a physical disability called multiple chemical sensitivity. Um, it has other names, such as environmental illness, and it's this very this this disability that's very mysterious to people who don't have it. It seems kind of unbelievable, and people don't really understand it. But it's very debilitating in terms of trying to live a safe life and have safe housing and try to get you know adequate health care. And so I'm just here to try to bring awareness to the water community about what multiple chemical sensitivity is. So Isabel, how multiple chemical sensitivity affects your health? So, <clears throat> um, because my multiple chemical sensitivity is caused by chronic late stage Lyme disease, it really has everything to do with the weakening of the immune system. Um, and so I have, um, I get very ill when exposed to chemicals that other people are not bothered by, um, such as cigarette smoke, petrochemicals, new paint on walls, perfume, um, those kind of chemicals. There's many more. Um, there's just a vast array of chemicals. Um, in the modern world, everywhere you go, when you go to the doctor's office, when you go to any public places, and when you're living in public housing, which is what I'm living in, um, I'm just constantly barraged by a multitude of chemicals that make me ill. It's hard to have well-being, and um, and I'm just constantly having to tell people or ask people to change their change their products or use less harsh products because my immune system is very weak, and um, I can't speak for everybody with multiple chemical sensitivity. Everybody has different allergies. It's actually allergies, which is very serious. When you think about somebody who has an allergy to peanuts, that is something that is mainstream in the knowledge of people. So if you have a child who's allergic to peanuts and they go to school, then everybody is supposed to know about it. A teacher is supposed to be told. And when they go to school, they should not be exposed to peanuts um, because they know that if they're, you know, if that child is exposed to peanuts, then they will have an anaphylactic reaction and they could die. So, I want people to understand that multiple chemical sensitivity should treat be treated similarly because these are not sensitivities per se. Um, in some of us, these are allergies, and in, you know, if we are exposed to some of these chemicals, um, it can be fatal. So, you know, um, in you, when, when I try to talk to people about multiple chemical sensitivities, sometimes they understand in this very general way where they think, oh, I love the environment and we should all be exposed to more nature. And yes, petrochemicals are awful. And, um, but they won't stop, you know, but, but they don't understand that, you know, something like petrochemicals will be affecting their health in the long term. Um, but for somebody with multiple chemical sensitivity, our reactions to, say, those petrochemicals is immediate. You know, we will immediately be sickened, and we will have all kinds of this cascade of like symptoms. For instance, asthma. We could have an asthma attack that is fatal um, because our immune systems are weakened by some other condition. And I can't say, you know, what you know the history of other people with MCS, um, but it has to do with the immune system. Um, these chemicals that are prevalent in our modern society are not regulated by anyone. And 
Many of them are toxic. Most of them are toxic. And they're not good for human health in general, but especially not for people with multiple chemical sensitivity or any kind of mu immune disorder. Um, so, yeah, I want people to understand that people with MCS are not, you know, trying to be difficult and we're not choosing to live a lifestyle. Um, I've heard that from, you know, people in the housing community because I have public housing. I have been accused of um, choosing to have multiple chemical sensitivity and that I'm choosing a lifestyle of not living with chemicals. But it's not a lifestyle choice. It is an actual physical disability. It is a disease. I would never chose it. Um, it was not because of something I did in my past. Um, so um, I just want people to understand that um, the chemicals that we're putting into the environment are weakening some of us faster than others. They're weakening all of us, and they're generally making the public unhealthy in many ways that isn't being looked at because our society is pretty much run by pharmaceutical companies and oil companies. So it's in their best interest to, you know, just um, inundate us with all kinds of chemicals that make them money. But when you have a history of um, adversity and your health suffers because of that, you can't process these chemicals the way that maybe somebody else who's had um, a more privileged environment has. What I'm trying to say here is that um, I'm a person of color and I'm low income. I am a poor woman of color. And I, like many poor people of color, have lived in areas that are considered brownfields. And I'm talking about public housing. So these are places that have been um, polluted by industry and then housing gets built over these places. So a lot of us have poor health. We have asthma. Um, you know, we have all kinds of health problems because the places that we live in are already unhealthy. You know, they're already past the point where other people of greater means would move away. <laughs> but we are forced to stay and live on top of each other, usually in big high rises where we're all closed in and, um, you know, it's usually at big intersections or near a train station. So anyhow, people, certain um, populations are more affected by chemicals than others and are more inundated by chemicals than others. And that tends to be poor people and people of color um, and people with physical disabilities. Um, so, um, you know, there's, there are just a lot of layers to this. And um, yeah, so... That's, that's my answer. I can't quite talk for everybody with MCS, but um, I can just talk from a point of view, I think, of being a person, a poor person of color in this country, exposed to a lot of chemicals um, that I can't, you know, that are making me sick. Talking about people whose immune systems are weakened when exposed to certain products, mainly products commonly used, such as air fresheners, scented candles, sprays, perfumes, detergents, not to mention pesticides and insecticides, which are toxic to everybody. But some people are more affected than others, and that creates a problem for somebody like you who suffer the effects this substance cause. What can you tell us? Um, there are many reasons why people um, you know, like, um, become, become sensitive to, um, or, or become, um, suffering multiple chemical sensitivities. Right. There are many reasons why, and all I can say is mine is caused by Lyme disease, but I mean, other people have, you know, like, um, you know, I, I've read about people who, work in our fields to, you know, to cultivate the food that we eat, that we buy at the grocery store that is always on sale. Um, those people are getting sick. A lot of those people are getting sick. Uh, I've read a lot of articles about that. I know that it's happening. Um, and they tend to be people of my descent because I am a Central American. Um, and so 
those people that are working in the fields, a lot of them are dying actually because of the pest the pesticide that's being used and sprayed uh -huh. on the fields while they're working, so that they're getting it on their own skin. Um, so you know, I've heard of a lot of cases, even especially this year, about people dying and having heart attacks, having heart attacks from those chemicals seeping into their skin, and dying. And those people are dying to put food on our table. Um, you don't hear about those kind of people, you know, this, because they're poor and they're people of color and they're paid almost nothing. They're a part of a huge process where the people who get paid the most money to make that food or bring that food to the table are corporations, um, you know, and they don't care about people. And I want people to just become more aware of the chemicals that are being used in the world and who's being affected by them. Some people are dying. You know, this is not, this is a serious matter. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not understood. Right. Okay, so I um, am just trying to make my way out of a housing crisis. And that's why I feel like it's so pertinent for me to speak up about this because um, I was recently forced out of my home in public housing, but I had a beautiful home that I loved in a community that I loved. And I was forced out of it um, by a very vindictive, mentally ill neighbor who targeted me. Um, and he knew that I had multiple chemical sensitivity. So he started making the place uninhabitable for me and using all kinds of chemicals that made me so ill I had to leave. I can't convey through the radio um, how much I loved my community and how I am known by many people and this was my home, and that everybody was very sad for me to have to leave. But but you were forced to leave. I was forced out of my home by this man who had more power than me and had more... Um, my disability did not, you know, my disability rights were not protected by my landlord. Um, and instead of my, instead of the person who assaulted me being removed, I was removed, which is often the case with... Um, women who are abused is that instead of them being able to stay in their home, it is the perpetrator who is allowed to remain while they or and or the children are moved. This is unjust. And so I have been removed from my beloved home of 11 years because some man used my disability as a weapon against me. And I became very, very, very ill from the products that he was using with ill intent, not because he was not educated. So I am now living in a new place. Um, and it is also making me ill because it is a new place. Renovated just two years ago, just newly painted days before I moved in. These, this is a routine matter, of course, that the landlord does. I can understand why, and it would be fine with anybody else. But I have a physical disability, which makes me very ill from chemicals like new paint, even if they say it is low VOC. That means low volatile organic compounds, but those are still volatile chemicals. Um, so anyhow, um, people like me are pretty invisible. We're very invisible when our physical disability is not recognized, and then our rights are not recognized I had to move. I was the one who, for whom action was taken against, even though I was the victim. Um, so now I am very, very ill living in this new place. Um, and it is hard for people to understand, but I'm just trying to, you know, I just, I just hope that someday more research is, um, you know, is put into envi understanding environmental illnesses and all of the roots that were taken that made that person ill. It is very, it's personal and it's different from, for everybody. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not as real. Multiple chemical sensitivity is a real physical illness and it can be used as a weapon against us just as much as, you know, anybody with a physical dis disability is discriminated against. When you see somebody in a wheelchair, you understand that person can't walk. Um, and then all kinds of laws have been made for people with in wheelchairs, because you can actually visibly see that this person has a physical disability. So people understand when you say, this sidewalk needs to be altered um, to help that person get onto the sidewalk. But when you, you can't, there is no sign, there is no physical, physical visible sign on a person with multiple chemical sensitivity that says that person has that illness. 
So we're always needing to speak up. And then when we speak up, oftentimes people don't believe us. They can't understand what it is to become sick by what are known as common household products, for instance. Um, we live in this material world where there's all kinds of chemicals um, that companies advertise and tell us is going to make our lives better. Thank you, Isabel. You have articulated what is so hard to understand about people who have multiple chemical sensitivity. Because as you said, it's a condition you cannot physically see in a person. And as I gather, the common household products you have been talking about can seriously affect one person, but not another. And that's why it's so important to educate the public at large about this serious condition, which affects a great number of people, not only in the States, but all over the world. Thank you for letting me have a voice because um, we're never going to gain any rights unless we talk about what we're going through. Um, so, uh, yeah. So in the case of candles, actually, that is, a, that, yeah, um, that's a really tough one because people think that that is calming and it's actually a very strong chemical process and a lot of us are allergic to it. Isabel, you have mentioned candles which are for the most part artificially scented and many people in fact get severe headaches and nauseated when exposed to these artificially scented items. Now, in the case of incense, we could say the same. Most incense products are also artificially scented and add to that the fact that as the incense is burned, the smoke can also be a problem. If the burning of incense occurs in an apartment complex where smoke seeps into the neighbor's homes. I struggled with that. Oh. I, I struggled greatly with that. A neighbor who used to burn incense and I felt like I was dying. I could barely breathe. I was having, you know, prolonged asthma attacks and she didn't understand. And it's hard for me to come against somebody who says that they need to burn incense or candles um, to calm themselves down. I know that it's hard to live in this world and we need our practices that we do to calm ourselves down, but um, chemicals, chemicals, you know, they make some of us sick. Um, so, so I just, um, I'm not a scientist, but, you know, I just really wish that people would try to understand people with with chemical illnesses because chemicals are very they make this world it is true you can't get away from them but when they're altered by corporations you know they're polluted they become a polluting factor so you know maybe long ago you know your ancestors burned incense um in ceremonies um but what is being used today they're altered those incense sticks are altered they're not this is not you know this is not the same spiritual connection now let's talk about cars, because in addition of the pollution, the burning of fossil fuels cause, the interior of brand new cars have certain fumes that can affect people, even those who are not affected by multiple chemical sensitivities. Yes. Um... Yeah, I understand about the new car smell. I've heard from people that, you know, some people say they love the new car smell, but actually those are chemicals. Um, and a great deal of the chemicals in our lives these days, um, oh, what they, they're, they're extracted from petroleum. They are exactly. petroleum. You wouldn't believe, you couldn't believe how much petroleum is in our lives on a daily basis. It is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. That is a toxic chemical. Uh, we were not meant to live with all of this petroleum. You know, and it is not healthy for anybody. There are still studies being done about what causes cancer. And I want people to know that all of the chemicals that we're living with are, many of them are cancer causing. But it's not in the interest of these corporations to fund any kind of studies that would actually um, prove that and, and bring that knowledge to the people because they want to make money. And it also has to do with racism because the places where they're getting these oil, the, this oil um, is usually places where people live, poor people live, forests, 
you know, rainforests, these beautiful places that are being desecrated so that we can have these plastic items. But, you know, and so people with multiple chemical sensitivity are often called canaries in the coal mine because we die. We're dying because these chemicals are killing us. Um, you know, and um, how long is it going to take for people to understand how toxic our environment is becoming? You know, um, this, a, a term called multiple chemical sensitivity is a ridiculous term. It sounds very benign. It's not benign. It affects us all in different ways. Which brings to mind the lungs of young children and teenagers, as well as the elderly in everyone's lungs for that matter, which are affected by inhaling all the fumes from vehicles and in general, the burning of fossil fuels. But I think also of children living, as you mentioned, in places where the air quality is poor, as in many public housing, in oil extraction sites in Africa and South America, for example. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, if you look at studies of like the health, public health studies, you know, I imagine they have you know, statistics about what, you know, the, the, the illnesses that are affecting poor people in particular, um, people in the cities, people living close to industry. It's, you know, I think about the children who suffer. They don't know what's happening to them. They don't understand. They just live in their environment. They're just being children. They don't know. I mean, there are children who go to school and, you know, like they spend whole days like, you know, in the principal's office with a migraine, for instance. And they don't know why, but, you know, it could be somebody's perfume. It's that we're, in, we're just being inundated by chemicals, and then we don't have a society that tells us that they're, you know, that, that, that they're poisons. You know, we have a society telling us that um, better living through chemistry. That is not a thing of the past. Um, that still exists, alive and well. So, you know, you have these like soaring rates of asthma, for instance, um, but, you know, and I have asthma myself and I'm given an inhaler which just puts more chemicals into my lungs, so that makes me sicker. There is no answer in the modern world for people with chemical sensitivity to help them across the board. Um, but, you know, it's that we need to like change the way we live in general um, so that we take some of these chemicals out of the system, you know, they're causing illness for everyone, um, and especially for people with multiple chemical sensitivity. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we don't, you know, I, I, I feel like sometimes I don't have leverage when I talk about chemicals because I'm not a scientist, but I just know how it makes me feel when I'm exposed to, you know, for instance, the off-gassing of new electronics or in, you know, a new car. You know, all of that, all of that is plastic and oil. Um, so, you know, I just wish that people would take, uh, you know, just understand the, the situation is dire. You know, like, our environment is dying. People are dying, but also animals, plants, whole areas are being desecrated. They're not plowed under. Like, um, you know, wildlife is dying from the chemicals that we're putting into the environment. And then we're eating food that is coming from that ground that has had pesticide poured all over it. You know, like, everything is connected. And so it's important for people to listen to those who are suffering because we're the ones who have the knowledge to tell you what it is that's making us all sick, you know? So, um, you know, I don't want to say, you know, at the same time that I, you know, that I need people to understand that multiple chemical sensitivity is a physical disability, I also don't want people to think that it's a disability in the sense that I am not able to live in the world, that I am disabled in some way. The fact is, is that the world is toxic to me. So I am not the problem. The material world is the problem. The chemical world is the problem. Um, you know, and so we need to like change our way of thinking about chemicals and, you know, they, you know, and just see how much they're affecting people, you know, and then the, they're destroying people, populations, and the environment. And it seems as there is not an end to this. We are a culture based on petroleum, and it is what moves our world today. But more people are becoming more aware of the need for a change. And there is hope that a world based 
in more natural ways of living can be possible. That is true. And I want to bring something up. It's very important to me. And I know this is a discussion about multiple, multiple chemical sensitivity. But um, as I've said, I um, got multiple chemical sensitivity because of you know, late stage chronic Lyme disease, which is an epidemic in this area in Vermont. The numbers of people who are contracting Lyme disease are growing. And um, so from my own perspective, I know that I got multiple chemical sensitivity because of the weakening of my immune system by this chronic disease called Lyme disease. Um, and there's not enough research done about it. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it. Some doctors will absolutely um, you know, close the door in your face if you tell them you think that they that you have Lyme disease. And people don't understand that you can become so ill from getting bitten by one little tick. So, you know, in general, um, the medical industry is failing everyone, um, and particularly in the community of people with Lyme disease. And I, this is important, and I want it to be a part of this conversation because a lot of people with Lyme disease also have multiple chemical sensitivity or chemical sensitivities. Um, so, you know, and it's because of the weakened immune system. So in my case, I have this chronic Lyme disease from, you know, which has no cure at this point. Um, and when I've talked to people about the Lyme disease, um, you know, I liken it to something that used to be called consumption. So nobody knew what consumption was um, a long time ago, and people would die from it. And, you know, eventually doctors put money into research and found out that, you know, it was different diseases, and most, and in particular, that it was actually something called tubercul tuberculosis. Um, so, you know, and once the doctors acknowledge that a disease exists, and do the research to find out what, you know, you know, what kind of treatments can be had, you know, to help people so that they don't die. Um, there's all kinds of knowledge you don't know, you don't, you don't even know what you don't know until you go there and you do the research. So, you know, I just think that there are a lot of people in this community affected by chemicals and it's because we have, un, you know, we have these other diseases that are not being treated such as Lyme disease. And then in the general sense, you know, it still has to do with this whole like paradigm that is upside down that people don't know how to live with nature anymore in a healthy way. We are completely separated from nature. We're destroying it. We're extracting, you know, extracting toxic chemicals from it, um, what they call rare earths or minerals. We're taking all of those beautiful things out of the earth where, you know, there used to be balance, you know, and then we're bringing them up to the surface. And the people that are working to get those chemicals out of the earth or those minerals out of the earth they're getting affected and they're getting sick. When you think of people in Africa who are like, you know, children in Africa who are, you know, working 24 hours a day, breaking their backs, trying to get diamonds out of the earth or the gold. Any of these like minerals that go into making, for instance, your laptop or your iPhone. Um, I mean, just, you know, in my own experience, I have a sensitivity to plastic. You know, it's made of petroleum and all kinds of chemicals that my body can't process anymore. So putting that food, you know, in packaging that food in plastic, um, you know, that's making me ill. Um, so it's almost as if we have to like change our whole, you know, like we have to think differently about what is healthy for us to eat and ingest and breathe in, you know? Um, and, <laughs> um, yeah, so some of us, you know, we, we're sickened quicker. Um, and so that we just need to like call it out and say, this is toxic. Um, yeah. Well, Isabel, thank you very much. This is an ongoing conversation, and um, this is not the end of it, and you're welcome to come back anytime, or if you want to add anything else. I think that that is it for now. I'm glad that this conversation can keep going. It, you know, it definitely has to be brought out into the light, um, and, you know, it, um, we should definitely have more conversation about, in particular, about how people with multiple chemical sensitivity are affected in public housing, <laughs> which um, I think we, this was a very general conversation, but um, 
yeah, we have particular difficulties in public housing, and a lot of us become homeless, um, as I was a few months ago, um, temporarily or permanently. So, you know, this is, um, you know, this is, this is dire, and it needs to be looked at. Um, you know, like a society should take care of all of its people, um, you know, um, especially people who have disabilities. Um, housing is one of the basic, basic things in life that, you know, everybody should have. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm glad to have this conversation and glad that it is ongoing. Mm -hmm.